Hey guys, welcome to the Good Nurse Ella podcast. I am your host, Nurse Naj, and today we are on episode four, and we are going to talk about communicating with the provider. Thanks so much for being a faithful listener. So today we're going to be discussing six tips when communicating with the provider as a nurse, how you can communicate, say what you need to say and be confident. You know what I mean? Like they're a human, you're a human, we're all humans. So let's get into tip number one. Be confident. Don't be intimidated because they are a provider. I'm a nurse. Back in the days, I would want to say it was like more intimidating to call the doctor because sometimes they would get like really nasty on the phone or they would talk to you like they lost their mind and you'd be like, who are you talking to? But now these newer doctors, they are humble. They are nice. They are kind. They are here to get the work done. They're here to focus on the patient. And honestly, they like really respect nurses. Shout out to them. And also shout out to the older doctors. I have found that like a lot of the younger doctors more respectful of the nurse's opinion. They value everyone's opinion, really, because at the end of the day, it is a collaborative team effort. So yes, be confident when you're speaking to the doctor Because they're going to know when you are nervous and when you don't know your stuff. They're going to be like, why is this person calling me? And then they're going to know you. And then they'll be like, this nurse is calling. Why? Even building a relationship with a doctor sometimes, even if it's a high and by relationship. Because a lot of times, especially as a newer nurse, you're intimidated. You feel like you may say the wrong thing. You really don't know what to ask. Sometimes you're just like, "Uh, this is what's going on with the patient. And um, what should we do? don't sound like that which brings me into tip number two gather all your information let's say the patient is now having a fever but they don't have a PRN Tylenol so this would be a perfect opportunity to take vital signs also look at the patient lab results because most likely the doctor will ask what was the white count and if there are any x-rays or cat scans any diagnostic exams that would support why the patient may have a fever and also while you're pulling together the lab results and the diagnostic results check the patient right so you want to make sure the patient's awake the patient's alert the patient is responding or the patient is at their baseline level if there's any alteration in their mental status then that's a big alert and you really need to get your charge nurse involved especially if you aren't confident on your own yet as a new nurse Now, if you happen to be calling a doctor because you got a critical result, this is the perfect time to go into the patient's room and check on them, see how they're doing so that you can update the patient. Because if you get a critical result that maybe the patient has a low hemoglobin and you go in there, you want to check the vitals, right? You want to look and see if the patient is hypotensive. You want to look at the skin color and then maybe the patient might not have any symptoms, but they may be in pain and they only have Tylenol, and you find out that the pain isn't being managed well, this would be a perfect opportunity to say, hey, doc, I'm calling because the patient has a hemoglobin of six, and then you will see what the doctor wants to do about it. But most likely, you should anticipate that the doctor is going to want you to draw a typing screen across match and also (laughs) see if the patient is agreeable to get consent. If you are a more experienced, mature nurse, you would have already asked the patient, have you ever had a blood transfusion? Are you open to getting a blood transfusion? Sometimes we do that. Of course, like the whole blood transfusion discussion is with the doctor, but the doctors will thank you so much more if you find out whether or not the patient is willing to consent for a blood transfusion. The patient is asymptomatic with a low hemoglobin, yet they are saying that they do have pain. This would be a perfect opportunity to mention the pain before the doctor hangs up on the phone. That way you are not calling the doctor a second time because you don't want to waste nobody's time. Like they have work to do. You have work to do. We can't be making multiple calls to the same doctor. Like, no. Tip number three, practice what you're going to say with a colleague. If you're new, this could be so beneficial because sometimes you could just go to a charge nurse or another experienced nurse on the unit and say, hey, I noticed that my patient is having a fever. Then they would say something that would trigger you. Has this patient previously had fevers? Maybe you wouldn't know on the spot, right? You'd be like, oh, I don't really know. And then you go to the chart and you check. That nurse can help you a lot. An experienced nurse would be able to kind of pick your brain a little bit, which will kind of calm down your nerves, especially you call the doctor and you say, hey, the patient has a fever. The doctor is most likely going to want to know, is this the first fever? Did they have a fever overnight? Did they have a fever on admission? What are the lab results? And now you don't have to be flustered and panicked because that's something you already checked. Another thing when discussing with the colleague, she can also let you know, oh yeah, you know, when you call this doctor, they always ask about the potassium. While you're brainstorming with your colleague, be sure to write things down. I know in the beginning when I used to have to call doctors, I used to write a script. Like literally it would say something along the lines of, Hi, my name is Naja. I'm calling from unit X in regards to patient Y. 
this is the situation that's going on. Patient was previously seen with this. You run into your SBAR. You always want to introduce yourself, the unit you're on, and the patient's name. And then what the situation is, the background assessment, like your vital signs, how the patient condition is, and then your recommendations. But if you're new and you don't have any recommendations, don't feel bad. Recommendations could come from a colleague or you could just listen to the doctor because you're not always going to know what to recommend. Sometimes you just have a situation and you're like, hey doc, this is a situation. Help now. <laughs> Tip number four, be sure you're calling the right doctor. This may seem like a joke or like funny or like how could you make that mistake but it is so easy to call the wrong doctor especially if you work at a teaching hospital sometimes you have to call the residents before you call the doctor or sometimes it's the on-call doctor not the doctor that's currently on the list it can get really confusing and this is when a relationship with the secretary come in handy because a lot of times the secretary could be like oh this is the actual doctor that's on call this is the one that isn't and even you can ask the secretary like hey i gotta call this doctor are they nice or should I be like, are they mean? You get a hint of what the doctor is like. Because that too can also like kind of kill some of the anxiety and it can kill the nerve. Don't be surprised if the doctor is not familiar with the patient. A lot of times the doctors get a call in the middle of the night. They're told this is the patient we're admitting you under. This is the case, this is the scenario. You call the doctor in the morning and they're like, wait, can you just back up, back up? Just give me a little bit more history. Can you review the case again? I don't quite remember. Don't think like, oh my gosh, how could the doctor not know? Like doctors have a lot of patients. Honestly, you should be like, this is actually excellent that they want to confirm that they got the right patient. A lot of times this never happens though because a lot of the times the doctors do know their patient even if they are a bit unfamiliar initially, they usually will pick it up. No, 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 no. That's not that's not the patient we're talking about. A lot of times the doctor will pick it up before you will. Don't judge them or think, how could you not know how many patients? It's not like they have six to eight patients like we have. I know somebody's like, eight? Hey, they'd have grabbed their pearls, child. <laughs> And when you are talking to a doctor, sometimes they're not going to give you the result or the answer that you want. Or they might tell you, don't call me, call the consulting doctor. And you have to think too, because if it's an ortho issue, calling the medical doctor isn't really going to benefit anybody. You should call the consulting ortho. Your knee could be a podiatry knee. So you wouldn't call the attending physician, you would call the podiatrist. Because if you do call the attending with a podiatrist <laughs> issue, they're going to be like, has this person lost their mind? Then they really gonna go off on you. Or they may just be like, no, you need to call a podiatrist, bye. And hang up on you and you're gonna be like, they are so rude. But honestly, you should have like thought a little bit about that. Can't really blame them. And also when you are talking to the podiatrist, the patient is post-op surgery and it's a bleeding issue. Note that they're gonna wanna know the hemoglobin. They're not gonna wanna know the BUN or the creatinine. Think about that. I know this is like a packed video, but honestly, once you get it, You'll be good to go. Number five, be sure to write down everything that the doctor says, even if it's a new order. I know at some facilities, you could just type the order in while you're on the phone with the physician. Some facilities, you need to write the order down. Regardless of what it is, always write it down and then read it back. If you're getting an order for a medication, be sure that you have the route, dose, frequency, parameters, sometimes doctors give orders and they don't put parameters and then you're looking at the blood pressure of 100 over 60 and you're like oh do I give this medication let me call the doctor getting parameters will prevent that from even being an issue sometimes they'll want to give it because it may not necessarily be to treat the blood pressure it may be to treat something else but nonetheless still try to get parameters for medications when you can and when you are taking a verbal order I don't know if I said this but I'm gonna say it again repeat it back okay so after you write it down and you get all the information that you need for the order repeat it back don't be shy don't be afraid to say like oh can you spell it because people have accents we're all different we all come from different places and you don't want to mess up on a verbal order that you took and put in the computer because the pharmacy may not flag it and if you administer it it'll be a big issue that's why a lot of times they don't even want nurses taking verbal orders. And tip number six, remember, you are a professional, okay? So like sometimes the doctors, they may not be nice to you on the phone, but do not get angry, do not get mean, do not get sassy, do not get nasty, do not try to like combat them because honestly, you're gonna lose, boo. You're gonna lose every time. If it's nurse versus doctor, you're gonna lose every time. They will replace the nurse like this, but they will not.
replace that doctor like that. I don't know if it's a lot harder to get rid of doctors or what the case is or if they bring in so much revenue, but just combat their anger or whatever problem they got with kindness. I used to do it all the time. Honestly, it actually became hysterical for me. Like a doctor would be like, oh, well, why are you calling me for this? I've already seen the results. I know. I'm like, okay, well, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. And then <laughs> I remember one time the doctor, he was always so cranky and I'll always be like, well, thank you so much. Bye. And I'll just hang up. And he came in one day. He's like, who is this nurse? And they said, oh, she's right there. I'm like, hey, doc, how you doing? He's like, you always happy. Because sometimes it really shows them how nasty they are. Some of them don't know that how nasty they are. I'm lying. Some of them probably don't know how nasty they are. But honestly, when you're nasty to somebody that just keep being nice to you, you kind of start to feel like, am I the problem? Yes. Yes, you are the problem. Be sure to end your call with kindness and a thank you because literally, as a nurse, it costs you nothing to say thank you. I'm sure the doctor would appreciate it. You don't never know what kind of day they had. I know you're probably like, they don't know what kind of day I had. <laughs> Sometimes it's not all about you, okay? We got to spread grace. We got to spread kindness and we got to spread love. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, catch you later, alligator. Bye. No. God bless you. <laughs> Oh, God bless you. Bye.